Welcome to the sixth in our 3D printing for remote control series. In this one we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look at the different filaments that you can get your hands on. Now we had a very quick look at the start of the series about the two most common filaments that you'll come across when you're starting to get into 3D printing and those were PLA and ABS and we talked about the differences between the two. But now we're getting a little bit further into the series what I'd like to do is take some more time and talk about some of the other ones that you might be coming across. Now this video we don't expect to cover every single type of filament and we're recording this at the end of October so I wouldn't expect that this is going to be a list that will cover everything that's currently out because every month there's new variants and innovations coming in 3D printing. But what it will do is give you a flavour for the kind of different things that are out there and at the end we'll also talk about what filaments I would use to print a couple of different parts. The first one we'll talk about is our friend PLA. PLA, polylactic acid, is quite strong, it's very brittle, it has a relatively low melting temperature of about 210 degrees C, you can get away down with about 180, 190, it has a lovely glossy look. Uh, the glass temperature is around 60 degrees C, so if it's going to be black and sat out in a hot sun in somewhere like Florida, then it's going to get a little bit soft and potentially deform. But it's great because it doesn't smell bad. In fact, some people quite like the smell. It's actually made from an organic molecule. So some people think it smells quite like um, caramel. The other nice thing about it as well is that it sticks to the bed really easily. So this is the one that almost everybody starts to print in. And the little printers that don't have a heated bed and have a very low range of temperatures for the heated nozzle that actually melts the filament, PLA is a great way to go. It's available in lots of different colours and we'll look on the next slide at other variants you can have it as well. Because PLA is so easy to melt, it's actually also a great thing to stick other stuff into. But I'll explain a bit more in the next slide. The other thing that we can regularly get involved in printing with, if you have things like a heated bed on your printer and the ability to push the temperature of the heated end, the print head a little bit higher, is our friend ABS. Now ABS is much, much stronger than PLA. In my experience, this is the kind of stuff that uh, can take a knock without delaminating or just snapping. Now ABS is what a lot of RC props are made from. So you'll be very familiar with this plastic and its ability to take a knock without completely giving up the ghost. The nice thing is it, it can be polished by acetone vapor. You'll have seen videos, no doubt, on YouTube and other places as part of your looking around at 3D where people are using a little bath of heated acetone, popping it inside an old biscuit tin and using that to actually smooth out the edges and you get some beautiful looks. It has a much higher glass temperature, so it doesn't start to get plastic again until around 100 degrees C. So this is one that you can use in hotter environments without worrying it's going to deform and melt. It does have a higher melting point, so as I said, you do need to be able to push your printer harder and print at a higher printing temperature. It also dissolves in acetone, which you'll come across in the household probably as something called nail varnish remover. Now be careful because a lot of those nail varnish removers aren't 100% acetone, but that's essentially what it is. And using the tricks like using an acetone ABS slurry to actually get prints to stick, as well as using acetone to actually mend prints is quite a cool thing to be able to do. It does have a small amount of shrinkage, so it's a little bit more accurate sometimes than PLA. So if you're making very finely honed parts, it's a nice choice, uh, but it does need help sticking to the bed. The print bed needs to be heated, like we talked about before, or you're using one of the other tricks or tips like using an acetone ABS slurry or a wipe over to try and get it to adhere. The thing about ABS is it does give off quite a stink. It smells like burning plastic when you print with it. So this isn't something that you'd want to be printing in a small closed environment. You want to make sure you've got plenty of ventilation and ideally you want to be nowhere near it when it's going to be printing for a couple of hours. So we can also get those basic PLA and ABS filaments in some more exotic variants as well. So the first one we'll look at is PLA with added extras. Now I've had a lot of subscribers ask about these, but you can get PLA with little particles suspended in it. Um, so for example, you can get it with wood in there and you can get lots of different woods. You can get beech, cherry, bamboo, 
all kinds of things. Now it usually involves essentially wood fibers that make up about 30-40% of the fiber itself but as it prints and that wood is warmed it makes a really nice smell. It's like working in a wood shop. It reminds me of my early days of working. The nice thing about the wood is that you can then also polish it and because the wood is porous you will also take a stain as well. You can even make the wood printed part look lighter or darker by adjusting the speed of the print and the temperature of the print head. You can also get PLA that includes metal. You can get it with bronze, with brass, all kinds of different things and at the end of the print you can actually use wire wool and other things to actually shine that and make it look like a metal part. It's a much heavier part at the end of the process but it's a really cute way if you want to make something that looks like a little statue. You can also get photochromatic particles, so ones that actually change colour depending on UV light. So just like those old hypercolour t-shirts, if you, some of you remember those from back in the 80s, that kind of idea where things that go into the sunlight change colour. You can get it with glitter in it, you can also get it even with things like brick dust. So you print it out and it looks like it's been cast in concrete. And depending on the speed of the print and the temperature of the print head, you can even with brick dust actually get it so that it looks like a very smooth cast part or very rustic and rough looking. You can also get PLA blends around there, so PLA with other plastic in it that improve that strength and reduce that brittleness that can sometimes be a problem with PLA. I first started when I started 3D printing, printing a couple of brackets for cameras in PLA and had a nightmare because every time they were put under any stress at all, they just gave up the ghost. So PLA blends is one of the options for those of you that can only print PLA on your printer to have a crack at. The other one then is ABS. So there are lots of different versions of ABS, a couple here. So there's something called Pro ABS, it's called other things as well. That gives you even less shrinkage, so it's very good for accurate parts. And you can also get a flexible ABS, which is 200% more flexible than the standard filaments you're going to come across. Again, those are options if you want the advantages of ABS and you also want a little bit of extra stuff too. So they're the basic two that we're going to talk about. Good old PLA and ABS, available in the vanilla versions and also in lots of different flavour combinations too. We can look at some others. Now the next one is one that's starting to become very popular. And one of my friends in America actually told me about this one, so thank you to John for this. This is PET. The amazing thing about PET is that for some printers they're actually starting to use it instead of ABS because it has a much higher strength and stiffness than PLA but it also doesn't have some of the drawbacks it isn't quite as brittle. Glass temperature is about the same as PLA, the melting point is about the same as PLA but it is really lightweight and it's also clear. So the other benefit with this, it is, is pretty colourless. So you can get it in lots of different colours, but when you print it, it's almost transparent. So it looks more like a stained glass piece. Now for some of the bits that you want to print, that's absolutely going to look fantastic. So for me, polyethylene tetraphylate is something that I'm going to be using a lot more going forward. And there are jobs, and we'll look at one of the examples in the end, where this would be a natural choice for me when printing something as opposed to PLA or ABS. The last one of the basics then is our friend nylon. Nylon is really hard, tough as old boots. It is what is a lot of gear trains and things are made up in things like motorcycles. It is super strong, super durable. It amazingly prints without odour, but it does have a really, really, really high melting point, which is part of the reason it's so great. So you have to have a printer that can run the heads at over 245 degrees centigrade, ideally a little bit higher. It's very susceptible to moisture, so you have to be careful with nylon. Ideally, you don't want the fans running, you don't want any um, open areas around the printer, you want to store the nylon in somewhere where it isn't going to pick up any moisture. If there's any moisture in the air or drafts about, then nylon won't print brilliantly. So there's a bit more effort, but if you wanted a part that's pretty indestructible, nylon is the way to go. Then we can talk about some of the other filaments, which I'm going to call exotics, because you rarely see them in home printing unless you're a real enthusiast. You have the flexible filaments, um, things like TPE, 
that prints like rubber. So you'll occasionally see people that are printing stuff out that actually uh, rubber balls and um, impossible puzzles that are actually made with rubber. It deforms. This would be quite a nice thing to print uh, camera mounts on as an anti-vibration mount. Uh, it does present some problems to print because one of the challenges is because it's a rubber flexible filament is that the extruder as it's pushing it down into the print head the filament can actually compress because it's rubber or rubber like um, and that means that sometimes the feeding can be a bit difficult so you really want your extruder nice and close to your print head for this and not all printers will print it very well. There's also flexible PLA, so you can get hold of PLA that has other things in it that allows it to a bit, be a bit more flexible. So again, you have those benefits of PLA of low temperature, no odour, no, don't need a pre printed heat bed typically, and you also get a bit more flexibility. That's probably going to be more resilient for those places like the camera mounts where you don't want it to snap every time you're trying to force it round the edge of a camera lens. Then we have others like TPU, thermoplastic and others TPC and FPE. There's loads of different types now that you can start to look at that are beginning as flexible options for our prints. There's a couple of specialized filaments about there as well. One is PVA. You'll have heard of PVA glue. This is exactly the same kind of stuff. It's polyvinyl acetate. Uh, it dissolves in water. Now PVA can be sometimes a little bit tricky to print with because essentially it is like printing with glue. And if you haven't got your settings right, it will stick everything together but it's a great thing to use for support prints for other material. So if you're building a 3D print and you have a couple of print heads in your printer, you can put PVA in one of them, maybe something like PLA in the other one, and you can actually use the PVA as the support. And then rather than having to break those off, you can just stick it in some warm water and the PVA will dissolve. Then you have HIPS, high impact polystyrene. It's useful for support with ABS. So whereas ABS supports in acetone, um, you can use this to support your ABS prints. Personally, I don't like using supports like that. When we talk about designing your own parts, we'll also have a look at some of the considerations to make sure that the parts are easier to print with a minimum of support. And the last one, you also have things like porous filaments as well that you can get your hands on and they're useful for other jobs. So that's a very quick whistle-stop tour into the standard kinds of filament, but hopefully it gives you an idea of the kind of options that we have as hobbyists. It really depends on whether or not your printer can uh, manage the filament, print hot enough, and also whether the print bed's there to minimise any curling at the bottom of the print. So where would I use these kind of plastics? Let's have a quick look at actual examples and I'll go through my rationale. So PLA, I would print that where I need parts that I don't mind the brittleness. Um, I'd use it typically for smaller parts on an RC model. The larger it gets, the more force can be applied on each end of the piece and the brittleness starts to become a factor. Wouldn't use it for things like snap, things that have to snap on other bits and pieces because as you're snapping it on, you'll tend to find the bit will ping off the side and you've broke the part. PET, I'd use that for more general use and parts that you want to be clearer, things like LED mounts, etc. ABS, that's the one that I go to when I'm looking for strength, when PLA and PET aren't going to do the job, where I need something that is going to be a little bit hardier. So things like the arms of a quadcopter would absolutely be something that I want to print in ABS. Nylon is a little bit more specialised. It would have to be something pretty big that I wanted to be bulletproof that I would go for nylon for. Just because you have to run your printer at such a high temperature that you need to make sure that it's capable of sustaining those temperatures safely for the time it needs to print nylon. So on the right hand side here I have three designs of stuff that I've made for remote control. So the top one is a Mobius camera mount. That's designed to fit under the Mobius cradle and give it a slight upward tilt so we can see out of the camera on the Mobius like we're looking at the FPV camera. It would work fine in PLA. doesn't have to be particularly robust. It's not going to be snapping around anything else. It's literally a wedge of plastic with a couple of nodules at the top for that location. There is my brand kind of moulded into the top of it. So the resolution with PLA and the fine texture control and detail that we'd get should hopefully make that come out a little bit better. 
The second one then is a light bar. So on the Nighthawk Pro videos, you've probably seen that at the back of it, there's a great big whacking LED. Now that LED bar is beautiful for orientation and I've wanted to add it to some of my other models. So this is a plastic piece that would actually go across the back and allow me to mount a string of LEDs on there and do exactly the same thing as I've got on the back of that Nighthawk Pro. This is relatively long and thin. It has got a ridge at the back to help with strength, but I couldn't print this in PLA. It would just be too fragile. It's got to go over the arms at the back and um, I probably held in place by a couple of cable ties. And any stresses or any hits on a landing, uh, if it was made of PLA, would just break it. So it needs to be ABS. Or if I wanted it to be transparent or semi-transparent so that I could see the light in more orientations, then I could actually print it in PET as well. The last one then is quite a thin, fragile GPS mount. It's designed to slide over the top plate of ZMR250 and those two holes at the front actually go on the little raised spacers that hold the top plate off the bottom plate and then the GPS kind of snaps into the piece at the side. It's not designed to be particularly robust but I couldn't print this in PLA. It would just be too fragile. As soon as it took any kind of hit of all it would just separate and break. PET could be useful for it but I want it to be as strong as I can get away with. So for me I would almost always go for something like ABS and have a look at that, just make sure that the overhangs on it were okay. And if I had a problem where it still wasn't printing and strong enough, then I'd try and print it in nylon. So hopefully with those examples, that kind of brings that to life. And by going through those actual examples, you've now got a better idea of the choices and thought process when you're looking at printing your old remote control parts. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.